Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my Time Travel Explained in Avengers Endgame video slash whatever you want to call it presentation. The reason I made this video is because I keep hearing all this stuff about like all the plot holes in Avengers Endgame and how it doesn't work and doesn't make sense and why didn't this person die when they shot that version or whatever. So obviously there's a ton of spoilers in this. Um, so if you haven't seen the movie, don't watch this or watch this. I don't care. At this point, the spoiler ban is lifted. So, uh, continue on at your own peril. So, first thing is timelines and changing the future. They explain quite clearly in this movie that you can't change your past, or you can't change your future by changing the past because it already happens. So here's our present, right? That line right there is our timeline. You cannot really go back there, okay? The way that time travel really works in this universe is you actually go into another dimension that is behind us in time. That's the way that they explain it. So there are multiple dimensions, right? If we were to go back in time to here, say that's like around 2017, we're actually going into another dimension that is an exact clone of our own up until we go in there and mess with things once we go in there and mess with things you start to skew into a uh, you start to change that you start to change that other dimension because you start messing with it now again in back to the future because people for some reason they take what's in one movie and they apply it to this which is absolute nonsense okay in Back to the Future, if you move from this skew point, you go to the future of the skew. That doesn't happen the way they do it in this movie. They say clearly, you just go back to where you came from. And you leave behind that messed up dimension. Okay? That's now that's now been changed by you messing with it. Okay? that That's how it works. Here's 2018, 17. Right? All, all these other years. <clears throat> and I have these because... Um, the majority of these are where they travel to in the movie. Okay? So, where did they go? So, they had to go back and get all the time stones. So, they go back to New York, 2012. Okay? They go back to Asgard, 2013. And they go back to Vormir and Morag in 2014. Alright? And they go back to each one for those stones that are right there. Okay? They leave from 2019, okay? Here are the different teams. You got Cap, uh, Tony, Bruce, and uh, Ant-Man going to New York 2012 for the Mind Stone, the Power Stone, and the Time Stone. You got Rocket and Thor going to Asgard for the Ether, And then you got Gamora, Rhodey, Black Widow, and Hawkeye going to Vorag and Vor Vor Voromir for the Soul Stone and for the Power Stone. Now a lot of people say, well, why didn't they just teleport to Voromir? The reason they didn't teleport to Voromir is because they explained very specifically in the movie that you have to have been there before, okay? The time machine not only teleports you through time, but through space, but one of you has to carry the marker for the location. Nobody here had been to Voromir. The only person that had been to, been to Voromir that we're aware of are Thanos and Gamora, and Gamora is dead. However, Nebula had been to Morag, so that's why they all beam into Morag, and then they bring the ship, and then Hawkeye and uh, Black Widow take the ship to Voromir. That's how that works. Now, back in 2014, there was also another Nebula, and they shared the same Wi-Fi network, and we all saw what happened. We also saw that they screwed up getting the Tesseract in New York. So, as a consequence, Tony and Steve have to go back to the New Jersey secret base in 1970 to get to try again to get the Tesseract, okay? Also, Gamora gets captured. Or, uh, I'm sorry, not Gamora, but Nebula. The Nebula from the future gets captured by uh, because of the Nebula from 2014. Also, Black Widow dies. She dies for the Soul Stone. Now, I think there might actually be a way to bring her back, but that's a separate video. I'm not sure. i got to think out the logic a little bit better. So, once everybody's got their, their stones, all the teams come back 
to 2019 right there where the star is, okay? They're back there, back from when they came. So, to Tony and Steve come back now that they have extra pimp particles. And uh, Nebula steals the bracelet off of... Uh, 2014 Nebula steals the bracelet off of 2019 Nebula, and then she comes back and nobody recognizes her, okay? When she comes back, she allows Thanos to come back, and on his ship are 2019 Nebula and Gamora. They come back to 2019. So all this um, leads to Thanos dying in the future. He's now dead, okay? He's gone. He can't go back. So because all these people left, all of Thanos' forces, forces left, it creates a skewed reality. This is independent of... Okay, this is independent of the consequences of what happens when taking a stone. You removed people, they're gone. There's no more Thanos, there's no more Gamora back in 2014. In this new red dotted reality, Thanos and his forces just vanished one day. No one knows where they went. And as, as a result, in that reality of 2014, in that dotted line reality, Thanos never gets the stones in this reality. However, Black Widow from the future, her corpse is still back there. Keep in mind, there's still another Black Widow from 2014 over on Earth, not this one, okay? And because Thanos never gets the stones in this reality, I think there might be a possibility to get Black Widow, but I'm not sure. Anyways, that's another video. Another thing that happens, in New York 2012, Loki gets the Tesseract, okay? So that also creates another skewed reality, so now we have two skewed realities. Okay, that aren't identical to the first one because of their messing with it. Yes, you can put the stones back, but you're not going to undo the fact that Thanos went to the future and that the, uh, that Loki escaped capture. Okay, so Loki leaves with the Tesseract in the 2012 New York reality. Okay, keep in mind, some people for whatever reason think he's going through time. Okay, he has the Tesseract. The Tesseract doesn't let you travel through time. He does not leave the reality. There's, I don't know why people think that. All he does, the Tesseract just lets you teleport from one place to another. Okay, you can teleport from San Francisco to Dallas. That's all it does. He just teleports out of there. He's still in the reality. But except now he's out there on the loose with the Tesseract. In this reality, there is Thanos. So maybe he goes and takes the, the Tesseract and gives it to Thanos. He's, because that was his mission in the first place, was to give it to him. So... Some people say that this is where a show's going to kick in. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. So, now that that's explained, let me, let's me let look at the Captain America plot hole. Let's look at everything that he did. So, first, he goes uh, to Vorag and, and uh, Voromir. So, he puts the stone back in the Power Temple. He arrives right at the second, or, or immediately after, um, Rhodey and Nebula leave. He, he's... He, he, he strides right in, and before Peter Quill can wake up because he was knocked out, he puts it back. Okay? Also, um, then he goes to Voromir. <clears throat> and there he gives it back to Red Skull, which is, which is pretty awkward. Okay? But this is all very doable stuff. Who knows what that conversation is? This could really be done in a bunch of uh, Blu-ray one-shots. Uh, it might even be another movie. Who knows? He also has to go back uh, to Asgard, uh, 2013. More than likely, I would say, because Thor's mom, Frida, already knows what the deal is, because she spoke to Thor, Thor, Captain probably tells her, look, we got to get this back into Jane Foster. Um, I know your son was here, so you know what's happened. He's traveled through time. we got to put this back the way it was. She probably says, no problem. Slip this in her drink and give it to her. Um, she trusts me. We're taking care of her. Whatever. Something like that. Probably not too hard. Because he has Frida there. And she met Thor. Then he's got to go back to New York. And Time Stone, he can simply just hand it back to the Ancient One. She spoke to Bruce. She's well aware of what's happening. Um, getting the spear back to Hydra might be a little bit tricky. But after Steve left... Um, after the first Steve left out of the elevator, he might hide around the corner or something and be like, Hey, here's a spear. I mean, I don't know how they're going to do it because he actually wasn't carrying the spear. He was carrying the stone. So 
I don't know where or how that's going to work. So the spear can be a little bit tricky, but it can be done. Uh, yeah, he wasn't carrying the spear. So, so that is a bit interesting. Um, again, it could be part of another movie, but it's still not a plot hole. We just don't know how he did it. Then he's got to go back to New Jersey. I don't think this one's too difficult because in the movie he had called Hank Pym and he said, Hey, inside of a briefcase there's a glowing cube and they opened it and then Hank runs off. So wherever he told him to run to, Steve can just set the case there and kind of like peer around the corner to make sh sure Hank Pym finds it. He finds it and then he takes it back. So Hank will do the work for him in that case. Okay. And you know, who knows, especially thinking back to the spear, he might have had a, there might have been more stuff inside that briefcase, maybe a little fake spear, well, who knows, who knows. Okay, now here's where the plot hole, so-called plot hole comes in that people want to talk about, is Captain Stain in the past, okay? He goes back to the 1940s, so, and he stays there. Uh, more than likely he has help from Hank Pym or something, I mean, maybe he does talk to him, I, who knows? But he has enough to get back there. Okay, he, he, and uh, he decides to stay there. So when he stays there, this creates an alternate 1940s. Any stay that's there till he becomes an old man, right? So this is the third skewed reality. In this reality, Steve Rogers was around, got married to Perry, Peggy Carter. Had who knows? Maybe he had kids. He had a family. But he's back in the skewed reality. He is not in the first reality with the star up there that everything originated from. That's not where he is. But he has the coordinates to get back there. So once he lived to be old, then he went back up there and traveled to hand Sam the shield, okay? This is how it happened. People keep saying, oh, how was he on the bench? You don't know that he caught up. This is what happens according to the rules that they set, okay? And the other thing too, like when, when Nebula shot old Nebula, the reason she didn't vanish is because that Nebula was on the first timeline. So she shot a different Nebula from a different dimension. She didn't shoot herself. That's why. Okay? And I know, oh, well, Thanos says it's the same Nebula. Okay. Uh, I guess technically it is, but it's an, another dimension Nebula. Okay? So it, there's no contradiction here. No plot hole. So that is uh, how that works, and I still don't see all these gaping plot holes. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, without invoking, you know, you, you got to ignore all this stuff from other movies. So, um, yeah, that is how I explain it. That is how I understand it, and I think it's fairly consistent. Um, as far as what I can think of... Uh, I know that, you know, the stuff with Captain uh, arriving there, that's an assumption, but I think it's a fair assumption because it's based on the rules that they gave us in the movie. It's not some outlandish, you know, kind of thing that I'm making up. People are assuming that he stayed in the past and just somehow arrived there. Um, he doesn't have to arrive through the machine. Remember, the those little wristband things can zap you anywhere. He could have just appeared moments before, off camera, to the side, walked down and sat on the bench. Okay, no one says you have to appear in the machine. When they all came back and appeared in the machine, it's just convenient because there's a marker there and they all just reconvene at the same time. You want to synchronize things like that when you're running missions. So anyway, this has been my video explaining time travel and these so-called plot holes in Avengers Endgame. I hope you like it. Like and subscribe. Leave your comments below how much you disagree with me and full of crap I am, whatever, hit the bell, and I'll see you guys later, okay, bye.